I'm Trent with Columbus Epoxy Flooring. Currently, I'm standing on a urethane cement floor that we're getting ready to wrap up for a commercial kitchen here in Columbus, Ohio. Throughout this video, we just kind of want to show you the process that we go through to get us to this final part that we're wrapping up right now and just how it can impact your facility and potentially help for your service. Starting out, the client had existing quarry tile on their floor. The tile overall was holding up well, but they were having struggles cleaning it due to the grout lines. In a lot of cases, quarry tile doesn't provide sufficient slip resistance, so we were gonna be tackling them as part of this project. We started out the project by prepping with a shot blaster. This is very important when working with urethane cement, not only to hit the grout lines, which a grinder couldn't do, but to also provide a profile on the surface so that any coating that we put over top of that is gonna be able to have more of a tenacious bond on the floor surface. As part of the initial prep, we also went around the perimeters installing seamless cove base to allow a seamless transition from the floor up the wall. The cove base will also allow for much easier cleaning and maintenance for the kitchen crew. As part of the prep, we also have to install what we call a scratch coat. The scratch coat will act as our primer to fill in all the grout lines. Failure to install the scratch coat could potentially leave the grout lines from the tile showing through the urethane cement flooring installation, which will affect the floor aesthetically and could affect performance as well. The crew will diamond grind the surface for the self-leveling body coat that will be installed on top of that. Our urethane cement floors that we install offer a lot of functionality. These floors are very durable. They offer just a lot of utility value to a facility. Uh, we put down a sample here in our workshop and we just wanna show the performance that these floors offer your facility. We see a lot of epoxy floors installed by other contractors in commercial kitchens and other food and beverage settings. These floors fail very quickly. Um, we see them melt and deteriorate. It could be because of the fryers from the hot grease. Uh, it could be the thermal cycling from hot wash down uh, areas by the freezers, just from that temperature fluctuation. The urethane cement is going to be able to hold up to and withstand all of that. For this floor, it can withstand from negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Intermittent temperature, depending on the system that's installed, can go as high as up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that here very quickly. We're gonna take a blowtorch to the sample here, uh, the sample I'm standing on, which is urethane cement, and then we'll take it to just a regular like epoxy flake floor with a poly aspartic top coat. So for our temperature here on this blowtorch, we're running close to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna go ahead and take the blowtorch to the floor now just to show how the urethane cement reacts to it versus a lot of other traditional epoxy flooring systems. You can see the blowtorch isn't affecting the urethane cement at all. And then if we go ahead and place our epoxy sample in there and take it, you can see how quickly it's bubbling the coating. As you can see, there's a huge difference in performance against the heat between the two samples. Now that all the prep work has been completed, the self-leveling body coat is installed at approximately 1 8 inch in thickness, followed by a full broadcast of silica sand. When we're installing the self-leveling coat, the team must be very organized and structured. This product cures very quickly and will begin to firm up. Lack of organization during the install process could potentially cause issues during the installation and affect the floor's performance. The purpose of the silica sand being thrown into the body coat is to not only add durability to the floor's performance, but will also increase slip resistance for employees and anybody working on top of the floor surface. After the self-leveling coat has been set up, we will return the following day to clean up all the excess sand that's sitting on the surface. So another great part of functionality that these floors offer as well is slip resistance. What we have here, we just have what is called a neat installation, which basically means we have not thrown any aggregate into the floor to provide additional slip resistance. Um, we're gonna test what this alone provides us with our slip meter, both wet and dry. 
When you're working with flooring, generally a standard for dry flooring is around 0.5 on a coefficient of friction. Um, for wet floors that are level, it's gonna be around 0.6. So for our slip resistant meter here, we're gonna go ahead and test what this floor provides us on just a dry surface. Um, so to do this, we just kind of pull this tab here until the meter starts to move on us. And there you can see it's starting to move. So we're coming in at around 0.7. So now we'll go ahead and put some water on it and test it again. So there you can see it's about the same. We're coming in at around 0.7. If you're in an environment where you've got a lot more, again, fatty oils and things like that on the floor, if you're working in a kitchen setting, we can add even more uh, aggregate into the coating as well. It's gonna give you more traction. Finally, the urethane cement top coat is applied to seal the surface, providing chemical resistance, durability, and enhanced cleaning. Once all three parts of the urethane cement top coat have been mixed, the material is transferred to the floor. The team will install the top coat by squeegeeing it out, followed by back rolling for a more uniform finish. With the final top coat installed, now the client just has to wait the appropriate amount of time based on our recommendations before returning the floor back to full service. The urethane cement flooring systems that we install also offer uh, high levels of impact resistance. Um, it makes it a great ideal uh, surface for not just food and beverage uh, manufacturers, but also just industrial settings as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and test that here. I have a three pound mallet. We're going to go ahead and hammer at the floor a little bit and just see what happens. So as you can see here, the floor's held up well without really any noticeable damage to the surface. So finally, urethane cement flooring systems boast extremely high uh, levels of chemical resistance. We're gonna demonstrate this here. We have some muriatic acid, which is used uh, primarily for etching concrete. We're gonna test that by dipping both a chunk of bare concrete into the muriatic acid, and then we are going to take a sample of the urethane cement as well into the same jar, and we're gonna see how they hold up to this acid. Um, given a little bit of time here. All right, so we've let about 10 minutes lapse here. Um, and we're gonna pull out both samples of the concrete and the urethane cement to kind of see how they've held up to the muriatic acid. You can definitely see a chemical reaction uh, within the jar here. So you can see here between the concrete and the urethane cement sample, how well the urethane cement has held up compared to just a bare concrete. Great examples of why urethane cement is just such a good solution for an industrial setting or any, like again, just any food and beverage facility, uh, just because of its ability to hold up to those harsh environments, the high chemicals, all the range of temperatures and the impact resistance as well. Thanks for checking out this project. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us by phone, or if you visit our website and fill out the contact form, we're happy to get back to you with any questions.